everybody. Welcome back to Art Time Today. I'm Cheryl Smith and I will be your art teacher for today's fun activity. Today's going to be more about technique and how to do the actual art project. You will have the ability to create your own subject or whatever it is you're going to draw on your own. You don't have to copy my ideas today. I'm going to give you several different ideas um, on what your final outcome could be. But the main part of this is the technique. This is all about chalk and glue. So uh, before we go any farther, the materials that you're going to need are a little different than what they have been. First of all, you're going to need some dark paper. Black is the best. It shows up with the colors that we're going to do. You can see behind me um, how great the black paper works. But you can also use a purple or another dark color, like dark blue, red, and green. Ah, they work okay, but you're much better off having um, black or purple, uh, purple paper. Markers, not so much today. Oil pastels, a nice little set. This happens to be a nice big set, but you only need six colors or so of oil pastels. Or what I like even better than oil pastels for this project is chalk, is drawing chalk. I'm pretty sure sidewalk chalk would work. It's just pretty fat, but it's the same kind of thing. Chalk works the best. So you need paper, you need chalk or oil pastels, but the most important thing is glue. Not a glue stick today. The glue stick will not work. And I'm going to advise you to have regular Elmer's glue. It's thicker than Elmer's school glue or one of the other brands of glue that you get at you know, many of the different stores. Elmer's isn't paying me anything, but this glue is the thickest that you're going to want um, because we're going to be actually drawing with the glue. So good glue is one of the best things for you to have. And this glue works the best. So that's the material part of it. Let's go through some ideas. So while I'm demonstrating the technique, you can kind of use your brain and find out what you want to draw. So when I was a teacher, we, well, I'm still a teacher. That hasn't changed really, except I don't have a classroom full of kids now. I have you and me. It's kind of cool. Um, but we call this Picasso profiles. Anybody know who Pablo Picasso is? I'm sure if you did a Google search, you would find out all kinds of things about him. Have your folks around when you're searching for Pablo Picasso. And you can find some really cool things. One of the things he's most famous for is distorting faces. He did a lot of other artwork as well. I was lucky enough to get to his museum in Barcelona last summer. But the only, the, the thing that we're going to work on today are the faces that are all distorted. <clears throat> Excuse me. I found a book on our bookshelf called Picasso, and it has all of his techniques and all of his things, but we're going to focus on these faces. And you can see one of the things that he did was when he drew faces, he would draw a straight on view in the same picture as a profile view. That's why we call them Picasso profiles. A profile is the side view of your face. If you're interested in doing this, you might take a selfie or have somebody take a picture of you while you're looking sideways and you can see what your profile looks like. That'd be kind of fun. So he would put a side eye and a straight eye in the same picture. He'd put a, a nose from the side 
and maybe part of a nose from the front. He would do a mouth from the side. So he would combine these faces from different views all in one. And here are a couple of other ones that you can see. I know Mr. Fred's doing a great job of zooming and unzooming today. Um, so here's one. This one's kind of creepy to me, but it's got a straight eye and a side eye and her nose is off to the side a little bit. And this one has lots of angles with a side mouth too straight on eyes. But anyway, you can get the idea. Picasso did things in a distorted way. So one of the things that I have hanging behind me are a couple of examples. I'm going to have to use a paintbrush to point today. My funny fingers somewhere down there. So this is one that we did. And you can see on here that this is the side eye part. This is more of a straight on eye, two different views. The nose is off to the side now, like a profile would be. And the mouth is off to the side, wide open, but looking from the side, not straight on. And then the hair is all fun. And then we've actually added extra lines and extra details around the outside. We've even added polka dots and you can do that too. And I'm going to spin around here and we're going to look at this one over here. Ooh. And this is one that was made. This is the side eye, but this is like a real profile. It's like more realistic looking profile and then a more realistic looking straight on face. And then all around the outside are just abstract designs, lines and zigzags and polka dots and things like that. Really fun thing to do um, for your project. If you choose to do the Picasso profile, um, this is kind of like what you're going to do. Um, the other ideas that I have, one is to draw a vase with flowers. Remember, you're going to be drawing with glue. So you want large shapes to color in. You don't want to get really detailed. Another idea is to do a still life or a bowl with fruit in it. We used to do these a lot because they're, they're fairly easy to do with the big shapes of the fruit. And I will actually uh, demonstrate one of these in a minute to show you how to do that. And I have one here right smack in the middle. If I don't attach myself to the stool again, this one is going to be a little harder to see, but this one is a fish. He's kind of a scary looking fish. And this guy is colored with oil pastels. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil pastel to this guy and explain oil pastels a little bit. When you're coloring with an oil pastel, you want to hold it close to the end because they break really, really easily. The paper is actually on them to help it from breaking, help keep it from breaking. But you can color and then you can blend it. It's a little tough to blend oil pastels, but you absolutely can. But you can color more than one color in a space. So I'm going to color part of that, that uh, light green and I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it and color that in. You're using the lines of the glue to stay inside your lines. You can smear it and blend it. And if it doesn't look right, add a little more color and do a little more blending. But that's the cool thing about oil pastels is you can blend them a little bit and you can smear them to make new, uh, new shapes. So that's a fish with oil pastels. This down here is an abstract art that was done by a kindergartner. They are very talented too. And they did circles and triangles and other odd shapes and trapezoids. Um, and this one was colored with oil pastels. This guy that I explained first is done and colored in with chalk. Chalk is my favorite for this 
because you can really blend the colors. And let me, let me do a little demo on the chalking on this one. Just on, there we go. This is my bowl of fruit. And let me move my papers here. Need to put my oil pastels away. So with chalk, when you color with the chalk, I'm going to start coloring this. Maybe this is a, well, it's a piece of pink fruit, whatever you want that pink fruit to be. Um, I'm going to add a little green to it. So maybe it's some kind of an apple coloring around. And the thing with chalk, when you're coloring, it makes tons of dust. And you're going to want to blend it a little bit. As you're coloring, it helps to keep the dust down. And I'm going to blend that a little bit. What's going to happen to your fingers? They're going to get really dirty. So it's important to have a little bowl with a wet paper towel in it so you can clean your fingers as you go. I'm also, I always keep a dry one around to kind of wipe my fingers off. So that's another important part of what you have today. And a little information about chalk too. When you're coloring with the chalk, don't color it and blow it. Mm, it goes everywhere. Unless you're in a room or outside on your outdoor patio, you don't want to blow the chalk. You want to color with it, smear it. Sometimes I use my pinky finger or a different finger to smear it. And then if you have extra chalk dust on it, just tap it on your newspapers. You should have newspaper down underneath you and tap it on your newspaper off to the side, then lay your paper down, and then you can continue to color with your chalk. So you fill in your spaces and then kind of use your finger and blend, and that keeps the dust down. But chalk is a lot of fun. If you haven't used chalk before, chalk is a lot of fun to use. So, Last thing I'm going to show you is actually how to do the gluing part. And I want to show you how to do a quick Picasso profile. So I'm going to move my fish and move my Picasso words. Hang out over here, Pablo. And fish, you can hang. Why don't they all just fall down? That works out too. So I'm going to just move the fish over here. Pablo fell to the floor. And I'm going to put that up there. So. You are going to be drawing onto black paper, preferably, with a pencil. And it works fine. You can't see it great, but you can see it well enough to trace it with glue. I am going to just demonstrate one of these with a marker on white paper. It's not for you to draw unless you want to just do this as a drawing, and then you can do that. So I'm going to start out and make one side eye and one straight eye. And I want to exaggerate them and make them kind of funny. So to do my side eye, I'm going to kind of do a, a, it looks like a piece of pizza, basically. And then inside, I'm going to make it, now it looks like a 3D cone. I'm going to make the little eyeball. I'm going to make some lines around the outside. You don't want them too close together if you're going to put glue on it. And then you can put a few little eyelashes. Now I'm going to make another eye, like a football shape. I'm going to put a big circle, another circle, and then I'm going to trace around it so that it's extra big, and then maybe some eyelashes on that. Now we need a nose. I'm going to start in the middle and do a side nose with a one nose hole. I'm going to kind of make the outside of my face just with some straight lines. And we need a mouth. Let's put the mouth off to the side here. And so you can make a mouth. I'm going to make it extra big here. And then I can make the face come down. And then you can make all kinds of hair. And down over here, let's make some other big lines. Now, we're about ready if this was going to be what we glued. And we could put the glue on that, trace it with glue. But that's not what we're going to glue. 
We're going to put glue on this one. So I'm going to just draw this one. I'm not going to actually draw it with a pencil first because I want to show you how to do the glue. So we can do um, a little vase with flowers or we could do a little Picasso profile. I'm going to do it simple. Um, I'm going to do a little vase with flowers in it down here. Um, I'm going to try to do it pointing toward you. Uh, do you have this in the picture now nicely? Thank you very much. So like we did uh, a couple of weeks ago when we did our flowers, we drew some big flowers. Now make sure you're drawing big, big flowers. The grown-ups, it depends how old you are. It gets hard to, to squeeze the glue a little bit. But you can make a, a bunch of flowers first. Remember I said that before you make all the stems. Do lots of different kinds of flowers. They can almost touch. I'll put one more big flower here. The bigger the better. Woo! 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 That looks like a flower from the 1970s. You can put a few little dots, but not too many. Remember, you're going to color it in. And then let's do a vase. I'm going to draw a vase that kind of jumps over here and comes down. This is pretty much a rectangle vase. But I can make a zigzag in it, and I can make maybe another zigzag. So that gives me something to color. And then the table goes a little bit above. What you're going to want to do after you think you're finished gluing, let it sit for a minute or so. And then you're going to want to be very careful and trace back over so your lines are thick enough that they're going to show. So actually, my little zigzags came out very thin, and I want to thicken them up a little bit. So obviously, if I am putting glue on this now, can I color it now? Can I color it now? No, boy, would that be some kind of mess I don't even want to think about. So what, would you, what do you think you're going to have to do? The day that you put glue down, oh, what did I forget? the stems at least a couple of stems so i'm going to draw a stem down here but i'm going to make it thick enough so i can actually color it in and let's put a nice big leaf here and let's put another little leaf over here draw a little line on it if you want there we go so now that's too that's too wet to color now so you're going to have to let it dry. Let me show you this one. This is one I've been practicing on. This is a bowl of fruit. I did it about an hour ago. So you can see the glue is drying on there. It'll take you just, oh, I say if you put the glue down in the morning, you should be able to color it by dinner time. Sometimes it's draw, do the glue one day, do the coloring the next. Um, but you do need to wait a little bit. Oil pastels or chalk are the best. Black paper is also very good to have. Um, and I want you to have fun. I want you to really use your imagination this time. Use the technique, the chalk and the glue, but use your own brain for the subject of your artwork. I hope you had fun watching today. Please share with your friends. Please hit the like button for me because that's kind of fun to see so I know that what I'm doing is fun for you. Remember, come back next time, but always make time for art time today. See you next time. Bye-bye.